This is the most efficient way to create content ever. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman. I talk about the world's most exciting business sales and marketing strategies so that both you and I can grow our businesses better and faster. And today I'm talking about a system to create content that is faster and better than anything I've ever seen before. And it's all the stuff you kind of already know as a digital marketer or a marketer, but it's done in a specific order so that each step feeds off the other and that it is able to create content in a much more efficient way. You don't have to stress your team of thinking of strategies per platform strategies and, and all these different things, okay? So where do you start? When you're creating content, let's say you have a product business, some sort of widget that you sell, and let's just assume it's a commodity. Let's go with home cleaning. You, you sell a natural, an all natural cleaning spray and a variety of other cleaning products. So you're trying to create content to get the product and the brand out into the world in a way that is meaningful and people care about. So the first thing you need to do, and you're gonna hear this in all of my videos, the most important thing in marketing is psychology and understanding your audience. Everything else, in my opinion, is a waste of time without first understanding psychology. Now the problem is we all jump to, oh, we need a Facebook strategy and an Instagram strategy and a YouTube strategy and a Pinterest strategy and a website strategy. And yes, you need all of those things, but you need to understand psychology first, okay? So assuming you understand the psychology of somebody who's using cleaning products, in today's day and age, it's everybody who's going to need them. Anybody I would say that is purchasing the product, so you're probably not targeting teenagers or younger kids. They might use it, but their parents buy it. So you're targeting anybody from the college student who has their own dorm room and needs to have you know wipes to wipe down their surfaces, all the way to somebody who's 80 years old, who's in a retirement home, also possibly, commercial cleaning companies as well. So you've got everybody. So you've got so many different personas and ICPs that you're targeting. But let's assume that you understand me. You understand the 39 year old uh, guy who uh, loves business and, and um, just wants a good cleaning product, right? So once you understand a mental trigger of what makes somebody like me buy cleaning products. So here's what it is I can tell you from experience. What makes me buy cleaning products? Number one is I want something that is, makes me feel like I'm putting something on the surfaces that is generally safe for my kids and my pets. I have two young kids, one and three years old, and I have two pretty old dogs. And I'll spend a little bit of extra money to buy something that is natural. Even if I don't actually investigate if it's natural, if it says natural or organic or environmentally friendly, I'm gonna gravitate towards that. And most people who are millennials or Gen Z are probably going to gravitate towards that because we care more about that stuff right now. So that's one thing to understand. That's gonna make me, right? Now if it's more environmentally friendly, but it still cleans, that's the key here, right? I care, I care most that it cleans. I, don't, I want the bacteria and the germs and things like that gone off of uh, the surfaces, but I want it to be as clean and friendly as possible. So when I'm going to create content, the very first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to write a blog post, a pretty long blog post on how a product can both clean effectively as well as be environmentally safe and uh, safe around kids and pets. I'm gonna write a huge blog post and I'm gonna write it in a way that's entertaining. That's the very first thing I am going to do. I'm gonna literally do it Personally, if I'm a small, if you have your own, you know, Shopify store or something like that, and if you're a huge 500 million or billion dollar brand doing it, then I'm going to have my best copywriters write this thing, and I'm going to write it in the voice that a 39 year old person, but also an 85 year old person, but also a 18 year old or 19 year old college student is going to find friendly, right? So I'm going to write this blog post. And I'm gonna write it in a way, like I said, that is organized, easy to read, and reinforces that concept of environmentally friendly, but still cleans real well. All right, step one is writing this blog post. So I keep using the term blog post because it's sort of something you understand, but really this is sort of a synopsis. It may actually go and be a blog post. In fact, I think it could, but it also might be sort of a guide. It might be a, a downloadable guide, but we'll get into that in a minute. All right, so I, I write this blog post. Let's call it a 
three to 5,000 word blog post. That might be a bit much, but probably not actually. Three to 5,000 word blog post. It's written with the voice I mentioned and, and it's got all of that in there. Okay, step one, done. Blog post, done. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to scattershot the rest of it. I'm gonna take this core piece of content and I'm gonna send this out to as many other blogs that are covering environmentally friendly products, cleaning products, home products. I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send this brief out to as many of them as possible. And I'm gonna encourage them to write a similar post as it, or even offer me or my team to write a post. So this is guest posting. And the reason I'm starting here is because now we're taking this core piece of content that we created and I'm sending it out to uh, hopefully the hundreds or thousands of other bloggers out there that are writing this type of content. And I'm encouraging them to write something similar using the same framework and I'm even offering to write a similar post. And I'm adding in social proof as to why it's so important and why their readers are gonna love it and you know why we did it. So we're gonna start there, right? So what this is gonna do is it's gonna get the concept out all across the, the, the internet. And if you're good, by the way, this tactic and any sort of outreach, it all depends on the outreach, right? So it sounds simple, but you've gotta have a message and show that blogger why it's valuable for them to post that. So then I take that piece of content, I send it out, um, uh, possibly even send out a unique piece of content, content and I ask for the guest post, which basically links back to the website. Now, I'm gonna also ask those bloggers if they engage in social media. Do they share things on social media? Um, are they interested in receiving the products? So now I'm trying to convert those bloggers into uh, influencers as well. Most likely I'm gonna target the nano or micro influencers, so those, those are the smaller ones ones that have 500, 1,000, up to maybe 5,000 followers uh, to send products to. And I'm gonna send them the products and just say, we'd love for you to try them out. If you wanna create content with it, great. Just let us know, All right? Then we're gonna monitor. So now we have our backlinks. We have our other content that's out there. We can certainly share their posts on our social media as well. So it's coming back to us, uh, content that's similar and related to our brand, our cleaning products brand we can share that on our own blog, we can share that in our newsletter, we can share that in other places, right? So we're sharing the content that they're creating. Then we're sending them products and they're gonna be going and posting. So if you send your products to 500 creators, you're gonna get probably about 30% of them that actually create content using it. So we're, now we're at around 150 pieces of content being created out on social media. And this content then you can grab because it's using your product and then you're gonna turn around and you're gonna run that as paid media. And you're gonna run their creative, the videos, the boomerangs, the pictures, everything. You might need to spice it up a little bit. So you might wanna do a little editing per video. But if you have 150 pieces of content, and by the way, on average, they're gonna post one to three times. So you're gonna have anywhere from 150 to 450 pieces of content just by sending out those, those free products. Okay, you're gonna take that and you're gonna run that as paid media. You're gonna take the top 20% that's performing, which is driving traffic to you. You're gonna turn off the other 80% and then you're gonna rinse and repeat that every single month if you have the capacity and the resources to do so. So now you've got your guest blogging content, you've got your influencer content, you've got your paid media content over here. Now you have all the data you need to know what people care about related to that one core uh, blog post or brief. So now you can bring that internal and start to create your own content across email, social, even on your product packaging, um, even on your website. So you've got all the content, the language, the words, the keywords that all the influencers are using and all the guest uh, posts that the blogs are using. You've got a bunch of data to be able to start to create your own content internally. Then you turn around and you go and you offer the affiliate offering to the bloggers. So now you can go back to the bloggers, the most successful ones that are, that are driving the most traffic and you say, hey, you're great. Do you wanna start an affiliate relationship? You can earn commission. You go back to the influencers, the ones that have the most engagement and you say, hey, do you wanna become an affiliate? We'd love to work with you even more. So now the bloggers start creating more content. The influencers start creating more content. Your team internally is creating more content and it's all proven to be content that people care about because of that first round of data that you got. So this is how you can create an amazing content system.
There's a many ways to create a lot of content, but this is one way that in today's day and age, you can leverage other people's audiences to tell your team what you should be creating for content. And then you can rinse and repeat. You can then create another brief. Maybe you've got a new product coming out. Maybe you've got a new industry that you're going into. Maybe you have a new you know, sort of sub business that you're creating. You can do the same thing. You create a brief, which is what you believe the value of your product and its offering is. And then you send it out and try to get other people to write about it. You get other people to create video content and photo content using it. And then you leverage the best performing content that they're creating to inform your internal team what you should be creating. It's a way to save time and resources internally of creating your own content because the alternative, the way it's normally done is just inefficient. The way it's normally done is you've got a creative director at the agency that you're working for. If you've got the brand director internally that's, that's got a certain way that they think your brand should be positioned and it's, you know, they're steadfast on it. This is the way we want to present ourselves. And they create a bunch of stuff. They create videos for TV and OTT. They create videos for YouTube and Facebook and, and everywhere else. And they create designs and it all looks beautiful. And then they put it out there. And then sales trickle in, you know, maybe they stay, stay even, right? Impressions are way up because you're spending a bunch of money, but the actual conversions aren't coming through and you can't figure out why. Well, it's because you've got sort of a biased way of thinking of the brand. You've got this, this, this way that it's always been done, or you've got this super popular creative person that's coming in and working on the account, but they're one person who sort of has this vision and this dream of creative of, of how it should be presented into the world. And so you base all of your content on that. But the problem is that amazing chief creative officer isn't the one actually buying your product. Susie from Idaho is, Billy from New York City is, right? And the influencers that they follow are the reason they're buying those products. The bloggers that they're reading, the people that are reviewing products, they're the reason they're buying the products. So if you want a great content machine, put your stuff out into the world of people that already have audiences, learn what's doing the best and getting the most engagement, and then use that data and knowledge, the keywords, the language, the, the syntax, and all that kind of stuff, to then create your own content because it's proven that people love it. If you thought this video was valuable, please hit the subscribe button because all I do on this channel is talk about the most wild and sometimes unpopular business sales and marketing strategies. Um, I'm really trying to grow this YouTube channel. I love it. It's where I get most of my knowledge is YouTube. So I started, I, I decided I wanted to, you know, give back and invest in YouTube both selfishly because uh, we wanna get marketing clients from this and, and hopefully I can help you and my agency can help you. But also, it's a lot of fun talking about this stuff. And if you want some free resources like email templates, subject lines, cold email scripts, checklists for e-commerce launches, all that kind of stuff that you can use internally for your own marketing, head over to my website, jtimmerman.com. That's J, the letter J, timmerman.com. A uh, bunch of free resources over there. All you gotta do is enter your email address so I can send it to you. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care.